The year is 1995. The time is summer. The place, your local arcade. On your head, a Chicago Bulls hat. On your feet, LA lights. You've got a pocket full of quarters, a reputation on the line, and three letters with which to defend it. The greatest warrior is O-W-F. So you walk past a Bloodstorm cabinet, swerve around the Primal Rage crowd, strut through the Killer Instinct lineup, and swag your way over to the deluxe Mortal Kombat 3 machine. A perverse roar erupts from the crowd as you rip the frozen body of Striker in two, immediately filling the screen with anatomically accurate amounts of fleshy femurs. You discreetly stuff a ripped GamePro page into your back pocket, just in time for the announcer's booming voice. Sub-Zero wins. Fatality. 1995 was the nucleus of the violent video game explosion. But when did it begin? A trail of blood and guts can be traced back to 1991's brutal snuff classic, Street Fighter 2. Nah, we're just joshing with you. It all began in 1992, when Shadow Lords Edward Boone and Jonathan Tobias gave birth to the only idea that could have threatened Capcom's coin-op dominion, good old-fashioned ultraviolence. Bastards! My eye! Cue the parental outrage. Because who's going to protect the children from the tiny pixelated actors spewing digitized blood? Sales immediately increased by 14,000%. Heart removal, head explosions, immolation, spine extraction, decapitation, and cartwheel kicks? Yeah, okay, sure, whatever. These wanton acts of frivolous violence formed a Kama Sutra of killing that ushered in a new era of children going batshit. On the winds, a cackle of an arcade operator is heard over the roar of a million quarters hitting the bottom of the cabinet cash box. Test your might. But how were these lavishing finales performed? I don't know. No one did. No one but that one pimply-faced sophomore in the leather vest. He knew everything. He was the key to the newest form of video game marketing. It was an important part of the legacy of fighters in the video game industry. Viral finishing moves. The next summer, Mortal Kombat 2 arrived. Hot on the heels of its own success, it was walking with a strut and it was smelling its fingers. Fully embracing gore as its focal point, MK2's system changes were overshadowed by the prospect of new fatalities. Some were good, some were just... Yeah. Midway also took the time to poke fun at the Kaiser wave of parental censorship by stink-facing them with the introduction of babalities and friendship. 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 Even the world itself wanted a piece of the action. With the now-established fan base hitting a fever pitch, the well of fatality ideas was parched, lips cracking in the August heat, nary a drop of moisture to be had. In 1995, Johnny Tubbs and Ed Beasy dropped their latest album. MK3 arrived with a couple of cool fatalities. But a metric ass ton of hack, slapstick, and just downright kitsch garbage to your finishers. Also along for the ride were animalities. Don't forget about those nudalities, nigga. The focus then shifted to gameplay with the hastily released revision, Ultimate MK3. Not to be outdone by the rising tide of imitators, swagjackers, and snake oil salesmen. No 
notable hyper-violent mountebanks include Way of the Warrior, makers of the critically acclaimed games Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, Drake's Deception Among Thieves, Sumi Ninja, A Bloodstorm, brought to you by the screenwriter of Back to the Future, Primal Rage, Battle Monsters, Weapon Lord, Survival Arts, Jackie Chan's Fist of Fire, Shadow, War of Succession, developed by Robert De Niro's game studio that still encouraged players to perform fatalities even though the developer forgot to program them into the game. Underneath all that garbage, you're just like all the street punks I've wasted before! Play Fighter, Eternal Champions, War Gods, that was the prototype for Mortal Kombat for Biofreaks, Mace the Dark Age, Ultra Thing, Pioneers of the World's First Poopality, Blood Warrior, Carnal Sin, Double Dragon 5, The Shadow of the with featured inverted fatalities, in the form of character specific death animations instead, Wu Tang, Shaolin style, Expect No Mercy, Pray for Death, not to be confused with the Steven Seagal classics, Expect No Mercy, and Pray for Death, One Must Fall, Xenophage, Alien Combat, Killer Combat Instinct, Dude, what the fuck? It Had Fatalities, Falls, Cosmic Combat, Time Slaughter, Shut Up, Shut Up, Shut the, shut the Fuck Up, Shut Up, Shut Up! Even the notable Japanese shogunates were not immune to temptation. SNK Samurai Showdown series famously included graphical execution kills, and in a way, the Guilty Gear series incorporated them via instant destroy moves. For all you poo babbies, these evolved into Blast Blue's astral finishes. A completely different direction, respectively. The situation came full circle when the makers of Street Fighter are like. Dang, yo, it's 2004, we got a strike while this iron's hot. The highly anticipated Capcom Fighting All-Stars Code Holders was slated to have some of Capcom's best duking it out in 3D for the fate of Metro City. At the top of the game design document was Finish Blows. Was this ever truly a concept? Or was it a rotting jawless corpse that never really lived? The answer lies in the heart of battle. Also worth noting is the critically acclaimed new arcade king, Tattoo Assassins, which was poised to straight up change the fatality game, boasting a total of over 2,000 fatalities, well north of their original target number of 20. It was canceled due to intelligence and rational thought process. Tattoo Assassin's plans for fighting game glory were immediately foiled upon realization that it was Tattoo Assassin's. After almost seven years of a whole lot of... MK9 returned to the glory days of fatalities that made the drooling masses once again embrace the cacophony of over-the-top violence that made the series what it is. But there are still more pressing matters to address. Fighting game fans have come to expect even more from their fighters than just flash and gore. How should these balance issues be dealt with? Is reactionary patch after patch the best way forward? What about those DLC characters? And the online experience in general, should we just- Oh Jesus Christ, man! Reptile just turned invisible and exploded your shit! What the fuck? What the- Whoa, dude, where did you come from? Why are you talking about this stupid technical bullshit for? Uh, um, well, the, there, I mean, there's still there's, the matter of- Yeah. Whatever, just eat dicks! Fatalities are awesome! 